Hello everyone and welcome back or welcome for if you're here for the first time in my virtual knitting corner on the internet where I talk a lot <laughs> about all my knitting projects, all my knitting dreams and you know all the joy that this community is bringing me. My name is Daniela, I'm Italian but I'm based in Perth, Western Australia. If this is the first time you're here uh, you can find me on Instagram as a knitter suitcase and on Ravelry, though my project page is very much behind. So apologies about that as Danny UK. I also have an email address for this podcast, which is a knitter suitcase at gmail.com. And I have a little shop. Uh, on Etsy where I sell my handmade knitting project bags. Well, it feels like ages since I've been here last because uh, this last month has been crazy in my life. <laughs> crazy, mainly because of one little new member of our family, not a baby, I'm done with that, but a four-legged baby, which is who is our uh, lovely puppy, Phoenix. You may hear her in the background with some of her squeaky toys. She's been with us for a whole month now. And as a first time doggy mum, I must say, I've felt a, bit, a little bit overwhelmed at times because she's lovely. We can't imagine our family without her now, but she's a handful. <laughs> She is a bigger dog, though we rescued her. Well, we got her from the rescue place, so we are not quite sure what her real breed is. She's a mixed mixture of different breeds, all very active dogs, though. So, well, she needs a lot of walking, a lot of playing, a lot of training, and this has taken up much more of my time than I could ever figure up. Of course, mm, all the family is involved in this, but as I work only casually, and unfortunately I haven't worked many hours lately, uh, the, the whole, you know, <laughs> doggy training and, and keeping company and, and spending time with uh, is up to me, which I'm also happy about if I am true. If, I'm, if I am honest, but it's taken up quite a bit of my knitting time and it's taking up all of my sewing time. So my shop is actually having a little bit of a break at the minute. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't manage to upload. Actually, I don't manage to sew any more bags at the moment. But while I, I got at one point where I was really frustrated about it, now I sort of, you know, feel better. I know it's just gonna be a period of time and I will just try and enjoy having little Phoenix, that's her name, uh, still in the puppy phase. And, you know, I'll, I'll resume my, my sewing and my shop activities as soon as it will be possible. But you're here for the knitting, aren't you? So let's try and dive in into that. Uh, normally, I use the typical sort of um, structure, which is finished objects, which is um, works in progress. Uh, and then I think we'll have a little um, acquisition um, section, though it's mainly gifts for me. And also some dream needs that <laughs> I've got in the, you know, in my never ending queue. Oh. We like to dream about knitting, not only, you know, <laughs> work on it. <sighs> there she is, barking to I don't know what. <laughs> anyway, let's crack on. I should probably start telling you what I'm wearing. I will do a little bit of a stand up to show you the details of the yoke of this mm, little jumper. It's called Bore. It's by a French designer that was actually unknown to me before I found this top. And uh, I will add the details down below. 
I'm not terribly pre prepared for this episode, which is not new to me. So please bear with me. I knitted this, this top a few years ago now, I think probably in 2021, 2020 or 2021. And the yarn I used is a uh, Drops cotton. I think Drops Paris. Again, not 100% about that. Um, it was a very enjoyable uh, knit. Though I must say it takes some figuring out at some stages there she is she's just come to sit next to the tripod and of course she hit it uh, and the the pattern is originally in french so i i remember i found the english translation a little bit sort of uh, lacking of precision and you know you may now hear also my washing machine going that's you. That's that's the real life of a of a of a knitter for you and of a doggy mom for you. She hit the tripod again. So anyway, um, I enjoy wearing it a lot. It's got this sort of uh, V-neck both at the front and at the back. That's quite cute and. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the color anymore, but you know, it isn't too bad, probably. Do you want to show your face, baby? Come here, come here. There she is. There is my little puppy. That's my Phoenix. <laughs> okay, now you can go. So this is gonna be a bit difficult with the beast in action. Anyway, let's try and uh, quickly get into finished objects. And my finished object today is a piece that I have loved so much knitting, and that's my Stephen West painting bricks shawl. I started this one in December, inspired by these few first few colors that were actually um, little nuggets of yarn in some um, yarn calendar swaps that I did at Christmas. And I worked on it quite a bit during the Christmas holidays until unfortunately I ran out of yarn. But uh, I have loved resuming it when I came back here uh, in Perth after my trip to Europe. And I mean, this is a really, really big show, as you can see, oh, from this tip all the way to the other side of it. It's a very big show. I'll give you the measurements in a minute. And it is quite a lot of knitting, but boy, how I loved it. I think uh, the colors I chose were really inspiring me. And I have really tried to pull out some, you know, scraps I had. A scrappy project is always, you know, very dear to my heart. I have added a little bit of mohair. So this is a, my mohair dare. That's what Stephen West calls, you know, uh, calls it when you decide to add some bits of mohair. And some of these yarns remind me of previous projects that I've worked on. Um, so it, it's been totally joyous. The fact that um, it's sort of stripy, we can say there's a succession of, you know, different colors alternating with the main yarn, uh, makes it run quickly. And it's very easy stitches, just neat and pearls. So honestly, it's the perfect mindful, soothing, uh, satisfying project, if you ask me. Well, I love shawls, so I'm definitely biased. I cast an eye over there because the beast is mm, tearing apart, tearing apart something. Okay, um, this is a gift. And uh, the person who, who is going to receive this one, I'm pretty sure will adore it. She saw me um, knit it 
uh, when I was at the initial stage and she really loved it. So I, I'm excited to give it to her. Of course, it is a big, big piece of work. And, uh, you know, I am a little bit gutted at the idea of giving it away, but I'm doing it, you know, with great joy and with a full heart because it's, uh, it, I'm, I can still treasure the, the memory of the many hours spent knitting on it and uh, the, the satisfaction of seeing the finished object. I have a, um, knitting journal page for this project, uh, which is actually carried uh, to 2024 from my 2023 uh, knitting journal. And here is the page. There you go. Painting Bricks Shawl. I have tried to uh, replicate here the sort of brick style uh, texture of the, of the um, shawl. And this is the uh, label for the main yarn. The main yarn is Melbourne Four Ply by Eden Cottage Yarns, uh, who is a lovely lady in the UK who dyes beautiful yarn. This one is 85% blue faced Leicester, 15% silk, so it's a very soft and drapey yarn. I had actually bought this yarn to join uh, the mystery knit along in 2022, which was the twists and turns shawl, and then I didn't feel it. And uh, so I just, you know, kept the yarn. So it was really great to think I could use it again for a, a Stephen West um, shawl. Uh, the color in this case is a natural because it's this sort of really uh, natural cream uh, wool color. And um, other little bits of information I can give you is that I have used a total of, of 263 grams of yarn. 146 is the main color, while the contrast colors are a total of 117 grams. Uh, washing machine, playing its tune. It's knitted on 3.5 needles, which are definitely my favorite sort of needle size. That's probably why I also, you know, enjoy knitting needles, uh, shawls, because it usually is that sort of uh, needle size. And the um, cast on was on the 17th of December, completed on the 11th of March. So yes, it's been three months, but I haven't knitted, you know, constantly on it. And, uh, and it's run quickly. It's gone really quickly. I, I didn't find it a, a long project to complete, despite its size and despite the many, the very long rows at the, at the end. Mm, the final size of the shawl is 182 centimeters, the wingspan is 182 centimeters and 60 and it is 63 centimeters wide i must say when i completed it uh i was quite unhappy about um, my tension the particularly the the garter uh, rows the garter rows did look quite uneven and quite untidy and so i i was a little bit upset but blocking has changed it completely, has made it really bloom and has evened out all the stitches in the garter. And, uh, and also the, the border, which is a uh, sort of chevron kind of border, you can't really appreciate it when, you, when it's still on the needles because it just looks like any other row. But once you, um, once you finally block it, and I had to kind of pull, you know, down each tip with a, with a, with a pin, uh, it's fantastic. I suppose you, I could have sort of stretched the, the tips down a little bit more to accentuate the, the chevron. But anyway, I really think it is a gorgeous piece. The um, wrong side is just, you know, 
just as pleasant, I think. You don't have very long, um, very long strands of slip where the slip stitches are. And uh, I think it should be okay to wear. I've got another painting, another shawl of the painting series, the painting columns stitch uh, shawl. And that one I find a little bit tricky because the, the floats are definitely longer. Here it's only three stitches while that one is, I think it goes up to six stitches. And I find that particularly being a shawl, it's very easy to pull the, the floats. While in this case, I think there will be no problem like that. So yes. Super, super happy and I'm just ready to, you know, gift this one. Uh, that's why I am also, <clears throat> I have also entered it in a, um, where is it? In the um, Knit Along Handmade Gift Mal 2024 by Amber of um, A Lovely Scale. And yeah, that's it. Getting into whips, I have a chance of telling you a bit more about my first knit along that's uh, running currently uh, from the, it started on the 9th of March and uh, it's, it runs until the 9th of June. So if you haven't joined yet, you still have a, uh, all the time in the world to do it. And the knit along is called Vera Love Cal because it invites you to knit any pattern by Vera Marku, who is Vera Loves Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry. And Vera is the loveliest person and a very talented designer. You can check my uh, previous episode where I tell you everything about the, the knit along. And you also can listen to Vera in a little interview we did, which is, I think, very... Uh, I always love when, when I get a chance to listen to, you know, designers or makers tell their story and their uh, creative journey in first person. That's why I love my, my friend Gayanne's per podcast, The Perfect Pairing One, because she interviews a lot of makers and dyers and designers. So this time I, I tried to do, <laughs> to, to, you know, uh, become an interviewer myself and, and it was very fun. And it was absolutely interesting to, you know, get some, get in depth of uh, Vera's creative process and hear her describe, listen to her describe um, some of the characteristics and the, the uh, elements of her, her patterns. There are uh, lots of accessories in her catalogue on Ravelry. Uh, small scarves, uh, small shawls, bigger shawls, hats. There are um, a couple of lovely vests, and there are cardigans. <laughs> there are cardigans and sweaters. So there's something for everyone with a ranging uh, level of difficulty from from quite easy to really challenging. So we hope that if you haven't had a chance to start a project for the cal yet you'll want to go and have a look vera uh, gave us a, a 50 percent discount code which is vera love cal and uh, initially that was set until the 16th of march but she has actually uh, moved the duration of the discount until the end of march so uh, when i upload these it will probably be you know nearly the 31st but i hope that you will still manage to take advantage of that and there are some lovely dyers who are taking part in it um dying to knit yarns cable tie cable tie knits and um st wa styles so uh, you can find details underneath and in my previous episodes with regard to them generous discount codes that they have also uh, decided to give us. So um, at the moment my I'm on my first project for this knit along and this is 
here it is another shawl it is going to be a bit of a shawl dance episode so i hope you don't mind that too much this is my excelso wrap it is a triangular shawl all over lace and that's something i really wanted to you know do i I've, I've been wanting to make an old lace shawl for quite some time and i love this lace they look a little bit like little leaves you see and the way the creases on the one side are um, designed uh, make it look as if the leaves are like sprouting their stems are like sprouting from the border which is super cute and it is gonna grow quite big because it's a two skeins shawl or wrap but I have only just started my second skein. So once this is nicely stretched, it will be absolutely lovely, I think. Big and, and gorgeous. The uh, lace is very beautiful also on the, on the wrong side, as you can see, where these sort of uh, chevron zigzag lines are very uh, quite highlighted. And I do enjoy the reverse as much as the... As the you know right side it will it, in the pattern there are uh, pompon no tassels not pompon tassels at the um, three tips of the triangle I still have to decide about that but I think I, I quite like a tassel and you know I'm loving knitting it it is uh, the yarn I chose for it is a Beautiful Alpha 4 ply by Cable Tie Knits. That's her label in my in my journal. And it's the color plum. To me, it feels more like a raspberry rather than a plum, but whatever we call it, it's really gorgeous and I love it. Uh, now, uh, my friend Susan, you find her on Instagram as a thousand and one stitches, uh, who has sort of being my is being my co-host for this knit along for the uh, people the knitters in Perth um has is knitting the same in a beautiful sort of um, light blue color that she has hand dyed and that is great i will add a photograph here as well and we have quite a few ladies here in Perth who are also knitting um scarves and small shawls we also have had the first finished up i am starting to see a few of these projects knitted even in the wider <laughs> world or wider world web world um in particular i was absolutely in awe of uh the little fichu cholette which is a one skein project absolutely beautiful uh, that um, the knitting man recommends the lovely lady behind this uh, gorgeous yarn brand is knitting you've got a photograph here i'm so excited to see her grow and uh, oh i'm in love of the yarn she's dyed that's her own hand dyed and the name of it which is flimsy knickers i think it's genius it's so you know fun and giggly sorry she's chewing on something and uh, so i'm i'm absolutely you know ecstatic about uh, all the beautiful projects that are popping up within this um within this uh, knit along I will, um, in my next podcast, I will start talking about uh, prizes because, of course, every cow needs to have prizes. And I'm very excited about that. And, uh, yeah. Am I tempting you? You know, there's so much beauty in, in, in Vera's catalogue. I hope you will decide to join us with uh, with one of her designs. There's also a little cow that's been uh, released just last week. And again, that's a one skein project, which is mm, really cute because it's quite a long cow. So when you see it around her neck in the photographs of the finished object, it feels really cozy and, you know, mm, it drapes really nicely. 
So that's another option for you. Well, please comment below and let me know if you are going to join us and let me know if you have chosen a, po a project just yet, a pattern just yet. Uh, I hope I'm tempting you. Going on with the whips, I've got a little jumper to show you that I'm planning to need for my daughter. Now, this is a uh, project I'm a little bit unsure about, to be honest with you. I saw the photograph right here on Instagram and I was quite excited about it because the designer is a quite popular Italian designer. Her name is Emma Fascio. And while I've followed her on Instagram and on YouTube at one point as well for some time, I had never uh, knitted anything by her. And it just feels, you know, just feels fair to give my fellow Italian knitting community a little bit of visibility on, on my very small space, of course. So yes, I decided to embrace it and I decided to knit it for my daughter. She's 11 years old and she is very slender, very sort of tiny. Uh, so I thought the pattern does not really um, cater for, uh, you know, her age and size. But if I play with gauge, I may manage to uh, reach the correct size for her. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you where I am with it. So it's a top down jumper, as you could, as you did see in the main photograph. It's a top down, top down jumper with a crew neck and it's got this very nice lace detail around the yoke and, which is a detail I really, really like, the one sort of repeat of this lace carries on on the top of the sleeve from the shoulder to the top of the sleeve so it's this is the shoulder construction which mm, is it an inset shoulder construction not sure this is the right definition but it's a uh, i've mm, used it only you know seldom not not very often and still it's something i'm i i quite enjoy because it's very satisfying to see the sleeve you know, be created just by adding the, the increases along the, the yoke knitting that you're doing. So yes, I'm, I really like the, the pattern. I am not terribly keen on this color for myself, but my daughter loves it. And honestly, this is all yarn that I had in stash. It's two cones. The um, main yarn is a fingering wool and uh, linen mix that I got in Italy. And the uh, mohair that it's held together with it is also a, a blend of mohair and man-made fibers on a cone that again, I got in Italy. So it's, uh, it was on the moment giving me a little bit of joy for the fact that I was, you know, working off my uh, stash. And I started it and, and I went quite a bit down. So I'm now um, keeping increasing for the sleeves until I get to the point where I'm able to, sl to split. I like it. It's um, on quite, you know, big needles. I'll tell you in a minute. So it is growing also quite fast. I am just sort of a little bit unsure about the sizing because though I have gone down from the gauge, the gauge should have been 16 stitches on four millimeter needles. I have, um, use, I'm using five millimeter needles and I have 17, 17 stitches. So I hoped that that would um, sort of reduce the size and make it more suitable for, um, for my daughter. I'm not quite sure now. I've had her try it on and I suspect it's quite 
big for her. So that has led me to stop for a little minute and then I will, but I will carry it on with this one because I think it's a really nice jumper and my daughter loves it and she deserves a knitted garment from me because so often I see something I think she may like and I tell her, oh, shall I knit this one for you? And she's all excited and then I don't knit it for her because I've got two million other projects on the go. So she deserves me, you know, putting some commitments on this one. I'll keep you posted, uh, but I wanted to show you the page on my knitting journal. There we go. So the uh, pattern is called Winter Artemide. Artemide is the Italian name for Artemis, the uh, one of the Greek goddess, which, you know, who among the other uh, qualities of her is also the goddess of um, hunting and of uh, and is often represented as a as a doe or a deer so that's I found this little uh, decoration this little photograph on a on a magazine and I loved it so much and I think it it sort of you know is very suitable for the the kind of project I'm this is. So, yeah, I'll keep decorating the page. The cast on was on the 18th of February, but now I haven't worked on it for a long time. So this is going to be, you know, another project that will take probably four to six months to be completed. Never mind. We don't care because we are here for the fun, not for, you know, any to win any race or any, you know, mm competition and then because I am absolutely you know unruly and re I don't respect any knitting rules I don't think there are any knitting rules I cast on another show and there it is I'll show you the page on my knitting journal first because um, I, I really like this page this shawl is meant to be again a gift I'm feeling very generous this year but I think you know I have so much love and support back from the knitting community that I think you know I'm, I'm happy to weave all my love into these things so this is the page the Simon Shaw by Twinset and Pearl, which uh, who are a duo of twin sisters in uh, in the UK. Actually, the design is by only one of the ladies, and, and her name is Joanna Harriot. So um, they the, Joanna has got a very interesting catalogue of shawls and accessories and also some garments I believe on her mm, Ravelry page and they and she and her sister also have a podcast on YouTube that I invite you to check and the fun thing about their shawls that are all really beautiful and very different in style I must say is so there's something for everyone is that they uh, have given them names from people in their family so this is the, the Simon Shaw and here on my uh, page I have sort of created a little uh, palette, colour palette of the shawl that I want to create uh, and this is again is for a friend as I, as I said and um, I also have another of their shawls on the needles, you have seen it previously but that will come in a minute. So, well, basically I was really feeling like another scrappy project after my painting bricks show, because, you know, I really love putting together bits and bobs of yarn that is lying, you know, in my big jars. I've got a big jar here. <laughs> and uh, turning that, the scraps into something really special. So, what I decided to do was create my Simon Shaw, which is an all over texture shawl. There we go. So you can see it probably, 
you know, can appreciate a little bit better from up close. So it's a very easy uh, slip stitch sort of texture that you create with a, a, an increase on the just one side until you reach a certain width. Then you carry on for a little bit with that width and then you decrease. So it's a, quite a long and slim shawl. And um, while uh, what they recommend in, in their pattern is using just one contrast, one main color and one contrast color to create the pattern, uh, I have decided to use my scrubs. I should first of all just say that I was absolutely enabled to cast on this show by lovely Ruth of the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast because she's done two already and I think she's cast on another one, a third. She really loves them and she, you know, I'll blame her for this. <laughs> but um, all the shawls I've seen uh, by Ruth and on the project are two colors. Well, I decided to go for my scraps and I've decided to use as a main color, this combination here, which is, this is a lace weight wool yarn that I got again in Italy. It's a mystery yarn. I don't know uh, the, the content at all. It is 100% wool and I don't know the color batch, but I thought the two together would look, would look really, really gorgeous. This one is a um, mohair. The mohair I've got is a leftover from another project and is Kid Silk Mohair by Drops. It's color 33. So there's a bit of a theme in terms of color today. Uh, and then my choice was just, sorry for the crinkling, to uh, you know put together a lot of um, little balls I have that are all in the tones of um, dark green or tealy green. I've got this uh, more like purplish one. I've got this very speckled reddish one. I've got something that's more on the dusty pink tone. And I've got a little nugget of my um, mulberry for ply from the painting bricks shawl that I want to use as well and I'll create bands of color throughout the shawl. Uh, my plan is to keep the main color uh, consistent and just you know stripe the other colors with the uh, stripes that will I'm, I'm planning now to do like a couple of not very thick stripes. This is, um, this color here is a bit of a grayish green with, with some, some darker and brown speckles. And then I'll probably add the white. And then I think I, for another stripe, this thickness, and then I'll do a thicker stripe with, uh, with this beautiful uh, green, forest green that I've got, moss green. And then I'll uh, carry on with other smaller stripes of, of other colors. And I'm so excited about that. I think it will be really, really cute. The only trouble is finding the time to knit on it. Mm. That's a big issue at the moment, but never mind. Let's try and take it easy and breathe. We, it's not a race, there's no deadline, it's just for the joy of it. So I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll enjoy it till the end. But as I said, I've got another um, Twin Set and Pearls uh, shawl on my needles, named after another member of their family, of Joanna family, and that is um, the Cecil shawl. The Cecil shawl that I showed you in my previous episode and that I am uh, knitting in a sort of uh, private <laughs> knit along with my lovely friend Gayan of the Perfect Pairings podcast that I mentioned, uh, mentioned before. Our plan was to knit 30 minutes of it every day, um, you know, and work alongside each other. 
Unfortunately, as I said before, my, my life's gone a bit crazy in terms of time and space for knitting and, and I have probably prioritized my show for the knit along a bit. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. So um, I believe she's quite a bit ahead of me. But that means nothing because I do love it a lot anyway. Now, Genius Me has actually left it midway through a row, but doesn't matter. I've pulled a, pulled out the needle and I'll, re, th I'll thread the stitches through again later. So that's my Cecil shawl. So this is, again, a long shawl that is knitted in stocking in a garter stitch with a beautiful um, i-cord uh, edging and features a main yarn a main color as the main yarn and then three different colors mohair that are worked with a sort of easy to manage intarsia with the purpose of creating a different color like uh, shapes that overlap one with the other and so create a new color effect when they when the various colors interact and overlap with each other so i am i think nearly at the at the perfect half because what happens is that you increase on one side as the same as the shawl I showed you earlier. Then at one point you stop increasing. I think that was oh, this is messy. more or less here and you need a straight section and then you carry on decreasing. It is a very soft shawl. The main yarn, again, is a mystery yarn. I know you're getting bored of me saying it's a mystery yarn, but I've got some cute yarn to show you later. Um, this is a mystery uh, wool and cashmere blend yarn from Italy, and it's so sheepy. <laughs> it smells so sheepy. Actually, Phoenix loves putting her nose in, in this bag, but it's a no-no, of course. And the... Mm, the mohair are uh, three different colors. This very bright limey yellow is a Filcolana Tilia color mm, 255. The teal, which is a lovely gift from my friend Susan that I have mentioned before, is again Filcolana Tilia color, still looking in my journal. 289 and the black is a lana gatto so i've got a page for it of course here we are though i i've designed a schematic of the shawl and how i was intending to place the colors but in the end i have done things differently because in this way i only had the teal to overlap with the black while well, I wanted to see the teal overlapping the yell yellow again. So I changed this central section. That was again my Susan, my friend Susan's suggestions, I have to be honest. And then I have added this cute cutting to um, mention the fact that, you know, I'm knitting it together with my friend and with quite a few friends as it happens because there are two knit alongs going on for um, Johanna's um, shawls. So one is the TNP year 2024. Where is it? Yes, TNP year 24 by Ruth, who is again, as I said before, a great supporter of Johan Johanna. And I think she gets to meet them in person as well because they're not too far away in the UK. And the other one is um, a knit along that's being launched right now and starts on the 1st of April by um, the Twinset and Pearl duo. And it's, uh, I'll write it here, it's something like family uh, knit Carl, just because they hint at the fact that their shawls have, have names uh, from the members of their family. 
So yes, this is another definite project that will see its completion quite soon. Honestly, I'm really powering on on the Excelsior wrap, but this is, you know, second in second in the line. And then comes the Simon show and then comes the jumper that's still, you know, a little bit unsure. So, yeah, loving this one. And uh, you can go and see um, Gayan's Instagram uh, to have a look at her. Uh, version as well which is really beautiful as again she's got like a neutral background and her colors are on the um, purple burgundy uh, reddish tones her mohair very very beautiful she'll finish before me but i'll catch up for sure okay i am going to uh, finish off quite quickly you know, <laughs> I need to check on the on the little beast with some acquisitions and some dream knits that I've got. So acquisitions are not mm, are not anything I've bought, but they are presents from my gorgeous and uh, gorgeous knitting friends. So I did a swap with a lovely mm, knitting lady, knitting friend in Denmark. Her name is Hanne or Han. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And she is a fabulous knitter. She knits loads so quick. Uh, I don't know how many pairs of socks she's already knitted since the beginning of the year. And we decided to um, do a swap mainly uh, in terms of stationery for our knitting journals. But then, you know, as knitters, wool and uh, woolen goodies are always, you know, need to be there. So we, I sent her one of my bags and some yarn and she sent me the most beautiful package. Every single item in them, in it was such a joy for me to unwrap. Lots of little stationary bits and, um, and some stitch markers and uh, sweets and uh, well, some of the things that she sent me was also some uh, dish, knit, knitted dishcloths, knitted by her, of course. And that has been like a big surprise for me because I had heard of these knitted dishcloths a lot, but I always thought for some reason that they wouldn't really work very well. I thought they would uh, struggle to dry quickly and so would end up smelling a little bit in the kitchen. So I was not attracted to the idea of using them but now that I've got them I'm in love with them and I'm definitely planning to knit some probably my next life when I have more time but I'm planning to knit some and I think they will also make great uh, little gifts as this is a, a year of gift knitting and thanks so much Han for uh, like introducing me to these uh, these new knitted uh, little pro kind of project that I'm gonna love. She also sent me, and I am beyond myself with uh, gratitude for that, an amazing pair of socks that she has knitted herself for me. Look at that, it's, I mean, isn't it the perfect color, color for me? I love it, and the speckles are, you know, beautiful, they are bluish, teal and uh, purple uh, speckles. The, you know, quality of her knitting is fantastic. Look at the, at the heel. She does, uh, a, she did a um, heel flap and gusset with this um, option of doing like garter stitches before, you know, on the sides of the heel flap. And I love them. I haven't had a chance to wear them yet because it's still 30 degrees here and it, it feels like it'll go on forever. But I treasure them so much. And she sent me some beautiful yarn as well. So this great grey yarn, uh, the, <laughs> the brand is Man Dyed and it's so cool. It says dye hand dyed by man. Uh, the uh, colour is m24 it hasn't got a name it's just a a 
uh, sort of uh, code and it's 100 grams for 450 meters a hundred percent musing free merino but it's so soft it feels like not like only merino it feels like a merino silk blend i i don't know how to uh you know describe the softness of it and i absolutely adore the the gray this sort of tonal is absolutely beautiful and to go with that she sent me three balls of this lovely mohair that is unknown was unknown to me it's kid silk uh, super kid silk mohair 76 percent mohair 24 percent silk in the color 29 which is a light gray it feels it looks the color of clouds doesn't it and it's also as soft as clouds so I am ever so grateful for this present and I can't wait to, you know, find something gorgeous to knit with them. And then another beautiful, beautiful present I am super excited about uh, was given to me by my friend Susan that I mentioned earlier. And it's this gorgeous magazine. I've always been a very great fan, an absolute great fan of Pom Pom magazine. And it came to me as a terrible news the fact that they are not that they are quitting they are stopping the production of this magazine so it was a really special treat to be able to have their last number this is their their last issue and there are projects in them that i am absolutely no of so something i will definitely make is this show this scarf actually it's a scarf and it's the salvage scarf by uh, Julia Wilkins I had reposted this one on my on my Instagram when it sorry for the for the glaring I had reposted this one on my Instagram when it was first announced by Julia because I find it stunning absolutely amazing I absolutely love how just by you know uh, knitting with simple stitches actually you manage to uh, to reproduce the look of a woven scarf so this is definitely happening then there's something that will not happen because i'm not a crochet but if i were a crochet i would definitely make and i want to bring it to the attention of all the crochet out there this fantastic vest I love this sort of fabric that recalls a little bit like the Jacquard uh, fabric, uh, very popular in the 70s and in the 80s. And I love this, this um, vest so much. I think it's absolutely gorgeous in these colors particularly, but you may choose many, many different combinations. And this one is Convergence by... Jesset Bueno and Creazione Sananda in Manos del Uruguay. That's the yarn. I mean, it's fabulous. And then another one that is actually going to be on my needles for sure and quite soon is the Ria. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Sorry, I just need to find it. The Ria top. There it is. The Ria top, which is a, a cropped short sleeve top with a boat neck and sort of butt wing construction by Susan Lin and Yoni Makes. This is um, uh, knitted with a, a sour ball crazy uh, yarn as a contrasting yarn. And that's, some, that's very tempting because I've been meaning to try Zawa Bo for a long time. So this is probably the project that will have me buy it and try it. I'm not sure I'd add the um, fringe because I'm not particularly, uh, you know, in love with the fringe. But I absolutely love the uh, texture of this pattern, which is... Again, something very easy, knitting and slip stitches, I understand, but absolutely effective and really cool, I find. So that's that's another, um, but there's plenty of great things. These cute coasters made with woven um, eye cords 
or I mean also the the, the, the project on the on the main cover look at that definitely it is not a jumper or a set that everybody would wear but it my it blows my mind the skills and the you know and the talent that goes into designing that and uh, you know creating the pattern another thing that i was thinking in bed like two nights ago because what do knitters do when they go to sleep sleep no think about knitting so what I was thinking was also I may try and have a go at this little hat, which is quite cute. It's the uh, tapestry or tapestry hat by y Yule Kebelman, knitted in Erika Knight British Blue Wool and Kelbourne Woolens Germantown. But it's a very uh, textural, and uh, and I may have just the right yarn for it, I was thinking. So that's another one. <sighs> help me, help me get through my wish list, help me. Well, I suppose a very wise thing to do would be, for example, starting by using up some of the yarn I've got in my, in my stash when it comes to, you know, new uh, projects. And there is a skein that I have been dying to uh, cast on for a long time. And I think now I've got the right project. Hang on a minute. There it is. I have mentioned this lady just earlier talking about her fichu shawl. This is the Knitting Man Recommends yarn brand. And this is Mr. Fluffy. It's a two plies lace weight 7030 mohair kid silk um, skein uh, in the colorway Beholden that I got last year at Bendigo Woolen Me, at Bendigo um, the Sheep and Wool Yarn Festival. So you have seen this before in this podcast and I have shown it as something that I was going to cast on soon as well and I haven't done it yet. Well, because I suppose I wasn't finding the right project for it, the project that was re really screaming, you know, at me and that I thought would allow me to showcase the beauty of these colors and these uh, this dyeing technique, which is not quite your usual usual hand dyeing um, technique, but it's more it's something more like painting. You know, this is hand painted yarn. But I please do follow um, the Knitting Man recommends uh, Instagram um, account because you'll see all sorts of amazing things. Now I have thought that I could pair it with this. Um, Sorry, I've got fluff in my mouth. Mouth. I could I could pair it with this um, yarn that I've got from Italy. This is a hundred percent merino superwash, and I've got two hundred grams of these. Um, I think it would be a very nice uh, combination to make a Elton pullover, which is uh, the pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Here is the photograph. Very simple top-down boxy shaped pullover that is knitted by alternating stripes of um, a fingering and a mohair uh, yarn. And I think this would be absolutely glorious. A jumper in these two colors would be absolutely glorious. So I just need to clear probably one of my projects Maybe if I finish the, um, the Excelsior wrap before I start another project by Vera, because in the next two and a half months, of course, I'm going to need more uh, projects for the, for the knit along. That is just waiting for me. I need to uh, cake this up and start a swatch. That I'll allow myself to swatch for it before the Excelsior wrap is finished. And, uh, you know, Stay tuned because this one, this one is sense is going to be sensational, so good. So well, thank you for staying with me. 
thank you for bearing with me despite all the strange noises in the background and the fact that my attention was divided between the camera and the beastie there uh, trashing all her toys and my sofa cover as well anyway thanks so much for staying with me so thanks so much for all your comments i'd love to hear what you think of you know my projects i'd love to uh, hear that you are planning to join us for the knit along that would be amazing and um, yeah i hope you are well i hope you you know are having a good time and despite what life can throw at you because you know we all get very hard moments sometimes sad news and struggles and challenges i you know just want to to say that that's life but there are there are also so many good things we should try and treasure our loved ones and our friendships and and our knitting too because being able to express our creativity is so important and you know I keep saying I'm busy and I really am but I will forget and I will neglect mopping the floor but I will always enter half an hour an hour of knitting in my day and yes my floors are really very dirty at the moment anyway big big hugs take care keep well and happy knitting <laughs>